Okay, so one more time. This is the uh, Connecting to VCGI Web Services in ArcGIS and QGIS webinar. And I want to start out by saying that um, VCGI's web services reflect a partnership between a number of different agencies um, and we uh, refer to the, the consortium of agencies that do get together to talk about GIS in Vermont as the EGC, the Enterprise GIS Consortium. And working together, these different agencies have developed a portfolio of web services that allow users to bring map layers and imagery into their GIS projects or map mashups without actually downloading the data. So that's the key thing to know about web services if you're not that familiar with them is that they allow you to stream base maps, imagery, LIDAR data, other information directly into your desktop project or uh, online app if you're creating your own apps. So that's the quick overview of what services are. We're not going to go into a lot of detail about that. Um, I, do, I am going to, to demonstrate how to connect to our services both in ArcGIS and in QGIS. And if you're not familiar with QGIS, you are welcome to do a little bit more research on that. But the, the short version of what QGIS is, is that it is a free and open source GIS software. So it's something that I use in doing some introductory trainings. It's actually very widely used around the world, so it's a great uh, product. But ArcGIS does offer a lot more uh, functionality. There are some more options of how you can use services in ArcGIS. And I'm not going to go into those in depth because we're going to try to keep this as short as possible, but I will touch on some of those. And uh, if you're interested in learning more about that, uh, Steve, my colleague Steve Sharp might cover some of that in a webinar he's going to be doing next week. And my other colleague, Mike Briette, will be covering some of them in regards to LIDAR services the following week. So take a look at the calendar on the front page of our uh, website to see about those webinars if you have not seen those yet. Um, so as I mentioned, we're going to talk about ArcGIS, QGIS. And, um, before I get into the demonstration, I do very briefly want to do a quick explanation of the fact that we have both map services and image services. And there is a difference between them in terms of their functionality. And again, we'll see this a little bit in the demonstration. Um, map services will serve uh, images to you over the over the internet. And they're a little bit more limited in terms of what you can do with them. Uh, but they but they are a great way to get those um, images of those map layers into your projects and your mashups. Image services offer a few additional types of functionality. You can do a little bit more with them. The other distinction I want to make is um, between cached services and non-cached services. Cached is spelled, we'll see that in just a second actually. Cached is spelled C-A. C-H-E-D. Um, so for each of the types of services we have, the map services and the image services, within each of those you will see uh, cached and non-cached. And I want to very briefly talk about what I mean by cached and non-cached just because it's something not everyone's familiar with. Um, this is just the page from ArcGIS Desktop uh, Help uh, or Resources web page. And I just thought that it I want to point it out because I couldn't find anything else on the internet, to be honest, uh, that just briefly would give me some pictures and some words to help explain this. So the pictures are not uh, the clearest, highest quality images, but if I zoom in just a little bit, I think you can see that the basic idea here is that for a particular map service or image service, uh, you create, you pre-compute uh, images of that service at different scales. So as you can see here, if it's not too blurry, we have 1 to 2.5 million scale, a 1 to 1.25 million scale, a 1 to 500,000 scale, 1 to 250, and 1 to 75. So these, all these different scales using the same uh, web map service, you pre-create these different versions of your web map uh, at the different scales and you have them cached or saved on your server so that when a user calls them up and is zooming in and out on their project, uh, whichever cache image is closest to the, 
the Zoom level that that person is choosing is what will be pulled up. And because it's been pre-computed and pre-created and saved, the performance is going to be much better, which really just means it's going to draw much faster. So that's the basic purpose and idea behind caching and cached map services. This is actually what makes Google Maps uh, work so fast. It, it may or may not be something you've ever been aware of, but in the mapping, uh, the digital mapping community, one of the amazing things about Google Maps and Google Earth was the fact that all of that very uh, dense imagery data and map data was came up in your uh, view so quickly and, and redrew so quickly as you moved around and zoomed in and out. So this is important only because as you see the different services that we offer, you're going to have to make decisions about which you want and understanding the difference, and we'll see a little bit in my demonstration, the difference in terms of functionality as well as performance, and you'll make your decision in terms of what works best for you. Okay, that's all I want to say about that. You can ask me questions about that if you'd like, but I will warn you that, that that's pretty much the depth of my knowledge and um, if anybody has more questions about that, actually, I would recommend that you save them for uh, Steve's webinar next week, if you can participate in that, or take a look at the recorded his recorded webinar afterwards. All right, we are going to move on to the Open Data Warehouse. So, hopefully, you all have noticed, if you're interested in Vermont GIS data, that uh, VCGI. Um, put out the new Vermont Open Geodata portal early in the new year. It can be accessed from a bunch of different places, but right here on our front page under the welcome paragraph, it's in the first bullet, a link to the portal. Oh, I did already have it open. <laughs> and um, so this is an, this is an ArcGIS Open Data Portal and you will notice that it's, it's design-wise, it will look fairly similar to other portals that use this platform. We, up at the top, we have icons that take you into uh, various data ISO themes. But just below that, you will see a section that says web services. So here's some categories of web services. Uh, if you know you're looking for imagery services, you can go right into that category, you know, the various uh, categories. Obviously, if you're interested in parcel map data, you'd go right to that. The more services basically is all of those plus everything else, which includes geocoding services. And um, there are a fair number in there. There's a number of different ways to filter. We're not going to get into that today. Um, I am actually going to use keyword search because I have an interest in our base map service. And our base map service really is not what people often think base map means, which is tends to refer to imagery. Our base map is um, really a, just a map service that has a bunch of different map layers, uh, vector data layers, that uh, have been put together into a pre-symbolized map that you can indeed use as a base map for other maps that you might want to create. So as you can see, oh, and the other thing I didn't mention about our services many or all of them, I think maybe all of them, are also available in both, in two different uh, coordinate reference systems. Web Mercator, and the reason we provide that is people who are creating mashups that use um, the Google API, that is uh, generally done in Web Mercator. So we provide our services in Web Mercator as well, if in case people would like to bring these services into a Google API mashup. Uh, also, you will always find our services available at, in Vermont State Plain Meter. So if you're not using, um, creating something that already is in Web Mercator, I would recommend using State Plain Meters. Um, so make sure there's nothing else I was going to point out. Okay, so here's the base map. You can see right off that we have a cached version and a non-cached version. Sometimes you will see that the title actually says no cached, but if it doesn't say cached, it's not cached. If it is cached, it definitely will say that it's cached. And here is the base map in uh, state plane meters, not cached. So the first thing I want to point out before I click on this, actually, uh, is the fact that we know this is a service. I can sort of tell because it says we're Web Mercator. We don't have any other data that you would download that's in Web Mercator. But I want to make sure that I'm looking at a service and that I'm 
accessing a service. And I do that by checking this thumbnail over on the right. And that's going to tell me that it is indeed a service. So I'm going to go to the Vermont base map, Vermont State Plane Meters. When I click on that link, it actually pops open a new window, a new um, tab in my browser, and takes me right to the REST services directory. Now, this is a little bit um, perhaps not that user-friendly, but it is the best way for us to provide you access to a number of different things because this, is, this already exists and it gives us access to a few different uh, versions of the service. So one is that if what I want to do is simply pull this service into ArcMap, ArcGIS, I can just click right here and download a layer file that will basically do the work for me and plug it into ArcMap. Notice that there are some other options here. You can click on Google Earth and it will indeed open up Google Earth and, and pop the service in there. Uh, you can open up an ArcGIS online map viewer and view the service in there just by clicking on this link. But I am going to just focus on ArcMap and QGIS today. So we'll start with ArcMap. When I click on the words ArcMap or the, the link for ArcMap, um, my browser asks me, what do I want to do with this? So this is a little file that basically contains a reference in it to the service. I want to save that. It doesn't really matter where I save it because all, well, I shouldn't say that. For my purposes right now, today, it doesn't matter where I save it. You may very well uh, want to more carefully save it somewhere so that you can use it again in the future. It's just a little file that, again, has the reference to the service. But since all I want to do today is open it up in ArcGIS, I just save it, and then I immediately given the option to open it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now, nothing, oh, no, it does take me over to ArcGIS. I already had ArcGIS open. But if I hadn't had ArcGIS open, it actually would have opened it for me. And there we go. And uh, and it would have popped the the base map service right in there. So that's the benefit of the layer file is that it just it either uh, inserts the service into an already open project if you have a project open on your desktop at that moment and if you don't have ArcGIS open it will open it up for you and pop it in. So it kind of does all that automatically. So here's our base map service. Um, looks kind of like a simple map over on the left. It looks like there's only one entry here in our table of contents but in reality if we click on the plus sign next to uh, the listing for the base map service you'll see there's a bunch of categories and even those categories, many of them are um, contain multiple data layers within them, and so on. So one of the nicest things about using this base map service within ArcGIS is the fact that you not only get access to all of these layers, and they're all pre-symbolized, pre-set uh, to only show at certain scales, so if I zoom in, you'll see that what we see actually changes quite a bit. I'm now seeing a lot more roads, the more local roads. Um, and there's also a lot of layers that are not turned on by default, but that I can choose to turn on, like buildings and building address labels, all set up only to show at an appropriate scale. Um, and the, the really nice thing about it is the fact that they are all listed individually over here in the table of contents, so I can choose which of the layers I want to have on or off. Um, and you'll see that that's unfortunately one of the drawbacks of QGIS in terms of using our services, at least, is that you don't get quite as much functionality, even though you can bring in uh, data layers and imagery. So, sorry, I just want to make sure I'm not forgetting to mention anything. Um, Okay, um, so this is, again, an uncached um, layer, sorry, uncached service. just want to see what our properties are. Yeah, it's not very many properties for map service. And, um, and one of the key things about a web map service is that you can't change the symbology. So it is what it is. 
that's both a benefit and a limitation in the, you know, it's already done for you, but if you don't like it, <laughs> that's not necessarily a good thing. So um, hopefully that this is a helpful thing to you. And again, you can just use certain layers in here if you want to turn off the ones that you don't want. Um, another way to connect to a service is, other than, than using that layer file, is actually is actually to um, connect to the services in catalog. And actually, the benefit of that is that you really are collecting to the, the server and the folder that has all of the services. So if I open up catalog over here on the right, oops, uh, you can see under GIS servers, there's a number of different options, add various types of servers. Well, if we go back to this, uh, REST services directory for the base map service, you will see that, um, actually, sorry, I'm going to go back and do this for all imagery. I'm going to take a look at an imagery service. So I'm just doing a keyword search on all imagery because I know that we have a an image service that both contains all of our imagery, and notice that it also contains indexes, which, to be honest, is kind of the most useful thing about this particular service. It's a little bit heavy with all of the imagery, and it's actually a map service. I'm sorry, I think I said it was an image service. This is a web map service, which makes it a little bit slow as compared to an image service. But, as I said, the benefit is the indexes. So I'm going to go to this service, and instead of clicking on ArcMap to get that layer file, I'm going to look up here at the full URL. And I am actually going to copy it from everything before EGC services, because that's kind of the most generic portion of this. I'm going to just copy that. And if you're not sure what portion of it to copy, you can actually look at the name of the service. So the name of the service at the top of this page starts with EGC underscore services. So that's really the name of this individual service. Everything before that in the URL is the more generic address of where our services are located. So now that I've copied that, I'm going to go over here in catalog. I'm going to add an ArcGIS server. I just want to use services. I don't want to publish services. So I'm going to paste that in here. So I just replaced the little HTTP in there with a full URL. Don't need to a username or password. And now it appears over here under GIS servers. And if I open it up, I can see, oh, there's folders within that. And within the EGC services, there's a whole lot of different services. So we've got both image services and map services. And you can actually tell the difference by the name, IMG at the beginning, as opposed to map. And um, just close that up. And you can see there's also VCGI services, which is where the base map resides, and a few other random things. So the nice thing about this is once you've made this connection in ArcGIS desktop, any project, any new project that you open up and come back to, you will, as long as you're still, you know, you haven't reinstalled your software or anything, using the same um, um, computer, obviously, you will see that connection is still there and you'll be able to connect to any of the services. So that's a way not to have to keep going back to our, um, to our geodata portal in order to, to access individual services. Okay, um, I do want to add a cached well, gonna do maybe you can do the cached base map. Oh, actually, what am I drawing? I just do it through this. All right. So here's the base map. Here is the cached version of the base map. I can just drag it right over onto my map. It's going to take a second. And of course, it is a different um, 
CRS because it's Web Mercator. It's just warning me it may not be perfect because of that, which is fine. So here's our cache base map. Works pretty much the same way. Um, the, th whoops, the thing that I want to notice is how quickly it draws. Because the, remember the idea of a cached service is that its performance is better. So if I drag and redraw, and then if we turn on the other base map, it's a very slight difference, but I think you can see it. I think actually it's a little bit more noticeable with imagery. Let us now take a look at some imagery. Oh, I know what I was going to do was add the all imagery. That was the one I was looking for in here. Okay, so in map services, All imagery state plane. So this is our all imagery. Zoom out a little bit. And I'm opening up over in the table of contents to show you that, so by default it's showing us color imagery, but it also has color infrared, black and white, in the indexes. And I'll just show you briefly, if we open up color imagery, you can see it's all listed individually. Um, black and white, there's actually a lot more because it goes back farther in time. This also has some of the smaller um, collections in there, like Randolph Village. There's a few random uh, smaller extents. Uh, but we also have the indexes, which are kind of nice because it allows us, if you're not that familiar with what imagery is available, it can, it takes a bit to draw, it can give us oops, an idea of what's available where. And again, if you open this up, it's an, it has all the individual indexes for the various imagery collections over the years. Which means not only, and by default, certain ones are turned on. So if you're looking for something in a particular area, make sure to open up all of these um, subdirectories of in the table of contents so that you can figure out whether you actually have everything turned on that might be of interest to you. For instance, if you zoom into the Barry Montpelier area and you're not seeing something, it might be because you haven't turned on those particular indexes yet. And so you can see there's a number of different things here. And again, you know, you can turn on the imagery in the background if that's going to help you um, figure out whether an extent covers the area that's of particular interest to you. Oh, these are all just indexes, sorry. So you can turn things on and off and figure out what's available and whether the extent really covers your area of interest. Um, okay, just wanted to point out those indexes because those could be helpful in particular if we go back to the Open Geo Data Portal if you're looking for imagery and you're not quite sure what year imagery for your area was um, or um, Basically, if you're not sure what the extents are for the different years, it can be very helpful to have an idea ahead of time by having looked at an index. Because if you click on imagery services, what you'll find is there's a lot there. That's a little bit annoying to go through all of them. Once you start to become familiar with the naming conventions of the services uh, and the imagery, it makes it a little bit easier to use the keyword search to search for those. All right, let's go into QGIS now and see how 
we bring the services into QGIS. Um, for anyone that hasn't used it, you can see it's very similar to ArcGIS. It's, uh, it's set up the same way. It's, it's just very familiar. It has a map area. It has a, a layers panel, which is the table of contents. It has um, a browser panel, which is just like catalog. And um, the way that we bring a service in is very similar. back to our base map. So the difference is that rather than clicking on the arc map, obviously I don't want an arc map layer file to use in QGIS because that's not going to work. What I do instead is go over to these three little acronyms just above the name of the service, which is the biggest font on the page. Just above that you'll see and you'll see a slightly different array depending on what you're looking at, but you will probably see at least these three. JSON, SOAP, and WMS. WMS is the one that I'm going to take advantage of, and all I'm going to do is right-click and copy link. So I'm just copying the link that this um, represents. And I go back to QGIS. My Add Data Options are along the left here and I'm going to choose Add WMS slash WMTS Layer. I'm going to say I'm creating a new connection. I'm pasting that URL in and then giving this a name. And click OK. Oh, I already have one in there. Um, so all of the connections I've made are listed here. I make sure the one that I'm interested in that I just made in this case is here, is the one that I've chosen. I say I want to connect to it. If it successfully connects, you get this. If it doesn't for some reason, if you didn't copy the whole URL or whatever, um, tried to type it in, didn't work out, you'll get an error at this point. But since I'm seeing all this, I know that I successfully connected. And uh, it's reassuring in the sense that indeed it's the base map. We are seeing a the same list of uh, data layer categories that we saw over in ArcGIS. Uh, and we can open these up. So like roads, for instance, we could choose to open that up and see the different categories of roads that are included in there. Um, the difference is that if I bring in the whole base map, I'm going to change the image encoding. I don't actually think it matters between JPEG and PNG, but I find that PNG works best in QGIS in general, so I have a tendency to switch that. Um, so if I pick base map, first of all, you'll notice the layer name now is trying to uh, compile all of these different categories of data into one, which is going to look a little silly. But I'm going to click Add, and you can see that it works. Oops, forgot to change the projection. So it works. We see our base map. If we zoom in, we will see those other layers come up. What we don't get, unfortunately, is that full listing of layers that we can individually turn on and off over here in the Layers panel. Um, QGIS doesn't interpret the service the same way and therefore it can't give us that level of functionality unfortunately. Um, but this is something that by the way if there's somebody out there that, that has more knowledge than me and can help me figure out how to achieve that I haven't heard from anyone that there is a way around this but um, but the usefulness of the of the base map I find is not so much in bringing the whole thing in as if we go back and connect to it again, it actually allows us to bring in all of these individual layers. So it would be not so convenient to try to actually recreate the base map, but it could be convenient just for bringing in some pre-symbolized um, layers like maybe the town boundaries or maybe the roads. So doing them individually works quite well. Now you're still limited by um, the, um, the settings in terms of what scale things come in at. You can't change that. Um, but if that works for you as, as a background and a base map, that's pretty convenient. And we can do the same thing with imagery. Um, 
So let's bring some imagery in. If we go back and do a search on Nate imagery. Color statewide Nate. Actually, um, give me the all. There we go. So we have a service that says Vermont NAIP, N-A-I-P, which is the National Agricultural Imagery Program. Vermont NAIP imagery all years, not cached, Vermont State Play Meters. We also have, um, I think there's also a cached version of this. Let's start with the not cached. And again, I'm going to do a right click on the WMS and pop that into QGIS. And there's the NAEP imagery. Um, now, again, this is, this is a very convenient thing to be able to bring in imagery this way. It allows us to um, not have to bring in a million different tiles of imagery. Um, this is not cached. So you can see it takes a second for it to draw. But it's very convenient, and um, it's, just, it's just a convenient way to bring imagery in. If we go back to ArcGIS, and connect to, let's turn some of this off, and connect to the NAEP imagery. So NAEP state plane, NAEP state plane not cached. We can look at another neat aspect of um, interacting with image services. So because this is not cached, I can actually open an attribute table for this service. And what I find in this attribute table is each individual year that we have and that we make available through this service is listed separately. And it even has an attribute called year that obviously identifies the year. And what this means is we can bring in this service that has these multiple years. We can go to properties and we can actually do a definition query. And we can say we want year to equal 2003. So now we are only looking at the 2003 NAEP imagery. And we can actually rename this to say NAEP 2003. And then if we want, we can just copy this. Oops. paste it in here. Well, we can add it again, and we can do another one that has the next year of name. Do a definition query, and say year equals 2008. So now we can kind of toggle back and forth pretty easily for a particular location. So that's kind of a neat feature of the image services. Um, another thing that I'm not going to go into because, again, um, I want to stay pretty basic with this, um, this webinar and focus really on just connecting to the data for the most part. But uh, Steve pointed out to me, and he might talk about it, or actually Mike's going to talk about it in the LIDAR services webinar in two weeks, the fact that when you're using non-cached image data, image service, sorry, uh, you actually can change aspects of um, how that imagery is displayed. So by default, various things are set the way they are set, but you can change some of this, and that will actually change how it is displayed in your project. Um, if you have, if you're bringing in four-band data, you can actually switch it to um, to give more of a color 
to take advantage of the fourth band, the color infrared band. Uh, I actually don't think this is coming in this four band, but some of the services, the image services are. Um, again, I don't know a lot about this, and I'm not going to uh, do much beyond just pointing this out right now. It's something that you could look into more, or if you participate in the webinar in two weeks, you'll see an example of this with our new LIDAR services. Um, oh, I know I was going to see if we could compare cache data, cache image services. I guess the NAEP, you know, how is cache? Um, Well, maybe I won't do that. I think I'm going to stop there. I think I've covered everything I wanted to cover. Oh, oh, I know. There's one other thing that's a little bit of a bug that we did not see happen here, which is good. Uh, I'm not sure whether it is certain services or if it's one of those things that happens somewhat um, randomly in ArcMap. But occasionally you may find that you bring in a, um, a cached service, image service, and it doesn't draw. And, and it makes no sense because you brought it in, it shows up in your table of contents, it's turned on, and it is, um, oh, I have to bring in a cast one to demonstrate this. So that drew. So that's no problem. This is a cast layer. Um, if it doesn't render, the solution is actually to uh, Right-click on the name, go into, pro go into the context menu, and unclick Enable Cache View Mode. So for some reason, it will still be cached, I believe, <laughs> but you can actually um, choose to change from Cache View Mode to Not Cache View Mode, and that will solve that particular bug. So that, that's not really a feature so much as a bug fix. Uh, or not bug fix, bug workaround, if you do encounter that with any of our ser image services when you pull them in. So if you pull them in, they don't seem to draw, and it's a cached service, check for this enable cache view mode checkbox and uncheck that. Okay, I am going to stop there and um, take a look at any questions that you may have sent in. And if you have any more questions, this is your opportunity to send them in. Okay, um, so let's see, David has a question that says, is there a way we can take this, and he asked this a little bit earlier on, is there a way we can take this data and manipulate it ourselves? I see there's no way to access the attribute table. So yeah, the um, as you just saw, there is some limited ability to manipulate with the uh, non-cached image services. Um, but beyond that, that is pretty much the limitation, especially with web map services, uh, that you definitely don't have access to the attribute table. You don't have access to changing the symbology. There are other types of services, I believe feature services, that do give you that uh, ability, but we are not publishing any feature services yet. And, so, and I don't know a lot about that. Um, so in terms of the services that we currently publish, map services, you really can't. Um, manipulate them in terms of uh, symbology or um, labeling, anything like that. It's really just turning it on and off, turning the, the layer or the portion of the service on or off. Um, with the image services, there's some limited ability to manipulate. Um, and he also asked, is it QGIS from here on out, which it wasn't. I went back and forth a little bit. So if anybody has any other questions, feel free to send them in. glance at these to see if there's anything I forgot to mention. Um, as I said, there are other types of services that we have not published yet that I have not really played with yet, but QGIS also has, um, the, oh, is that not showing? has the potential to um, add other types of services. I think WFS is web feature service. But since I haven't done that yet, I can't really say much else about it. Um, maybe the other thing I can do is just highlight our services. Unfortunately, pops open a new 
window. Uh, if we go down to the web services, I'll just, just point out the fact that there are a number of different services in here. We also have the geocoding service, which obviously I'm not going into today. Um, but there are imagery services, map services that include things like uh, Hillshade base map, also uh, USGS topo maps. We have, there's the topo maps. We also have infrared imagery, black and white and color. Um, i trying to think if there are any other services that I haven't mentioned. The Vermont orthos, Vermont color orthos, Vermont black and white are the orthos that are collected by the state. So that's the state program. The NAEP, as I mentioned, is a national program. Um, yeah, I think that's it. OK, I'm not seeing any other questions. Pop that out to make sure, and we will probably wrap it up. I think we're all set. Okay, well, thank you everyone for participating. And as I said, I will be um, posting this recorded webinar. So if you want to, if anybody asks you about it, or if you want to recommend it to anyone, you can feel free to do so. Uh, I will go back to our website to point out that. Next week, just pointing out down here at the bottom of our uh, bottom right of our page, you can see in our little upcoming events. Uh, next week on the first of March is Geospatial Web Services: A Look Under the Hood. So Steve Sharp, who who's in charge of our services, is going to talk a little bit about how they work and maybe a little bit about why we've made some of the decisions we have about about what's on offer and how it's offered, that kind of thing. And then the following week, on March 9th, Mike Briette will be talking about our brand new LIDAR services, which will be available by then, <laughs> very soon, and uh, what you can do with them. And actually, again, why we made some of the decisions we did about what is available and then what you can do with it, because it's uh, pretty powerful stuff, of course, because it's LIDAR. So I hope you all have a great day, and I hope this was useful and helpful to you. Thanks.